Welcome to the shitcoin.com show, everyone. Uh, as always, I'm joined by the CEO of shitcoin.com, uh, Andreas Brecken. Happy to be here. And uh, today's special guest, uh, you may know him as the uh, benevolent dictator of Bitcoin ABC, um, also self-titled MPC extraordinaire, which I, I really enjoyed. Um, we have Amari Sachet. Welcome, hey, Amari. Hello. Hello. So, um, yeah, we, we'd love to just uh, jump right into it. So I'm sure our audience will definitely be uh, well aware of, you know, what, what your position is in the, especially the Bitcoin Cash ecosystem. Um, what sort of stuff are you working on right now? What's, what's the latest from Bitcoin ABC? Um, so right now, <laughs> it, it's, I don't know, uh, we are catching up with a lot of tech debt. Uh, it comes to something though, because we want to, we want to a point where we, we want to get to a point where we resume the work on Avalanche. And we've implemented a lot of, uh, a lot of cool stuff that come from Core actually lately, uh, like um, uh, BIP157, which is the, uh, you know, neutrino type wallet. So um, maybe the next version or the next next version of ABC is going to uh, support, support, you know, neutrino client. Uh, so, so that's one of the cool stuff that, that is coming. Um, Recently, we implemented PSBT. So this is a standard. Um, it's a bit complicated, but basically the idea is to provide a standard so that different wallet can sign transaction together when you do like a MTC or something like that. Right now, every single wallet rolled out their own standard, right? So yeah. if you want to do a multi-sig and your boss using like a ledger, for instance, or your boss using Electrum or or you know whatever wallet that you're using, that it works great. But if, if one of you is using, I don't know, the Bitcoin.com wallet and the other one as a Trezor, then uh, it becomes pretty tricky to do this kind of transaction. So PSBT is- Yeah, we had, um, we had the guy from Cold Card on and mm -hmm. uh, we talked a lot about PSBT. Okay, okay. So maybe, maybe I, I don't need to go too deep into it, but this is a standard that I've been uh, getting traction on the Bitcoin network. And so we made a BCH version of that. It's almost the same. It, you know, there are, there are a few details that are different because there are a few details that are different between BCH and BTC, but uh, it's like, you know, 95% the same. And, and, you know, that's the goal as well, right? Like we want people that support PSBT for BTC to uh, be able to also implement it for BCH very easily. And hopefully that gains traction. It's, it's you know, in itself, it doesn't change much for user, but it's an opportunity for wallet uh, people who build wallet to make a you know better user experience. Have you um, have have you guys considered making uh, SLP tokens part of the of the ABC client, or is it like or is it too layer two for you? Yeah, not not really at this point. Um, <clears throat> Maybe, you know, maybe in the future we want to build an indexer or something, but um, if we are going that way, actually, I would like to go that way. The main reason we're not going that way is resources. But um, mm -hmm. if we are going into indexing and stuff like that, the first thing I would do is roll out an address indexer, right? Because this is, this is yep. so useful for anyone that builds on chain. I mean, you guys, you know it because you have a business that, that yeah. uses crypto. But basically, if you want... Um, you know, if you are a miner, you don't really care about that. If you want to validate the chain, you don't care about that. But if you want to do almost anything else, you need an address indexer. If you want to do like a, a block explorer, if you want to do like a wallet backend, if you want to do an exchange, if you want to do whatever, you need an address indexer because you need to know what balance exists at what address. And, um, or, and at right least, now, or at least uh, yeah. what has been... Um, you know what you what you take source have been sent to which addresses is, is yes, pretty yes. nice to know because <laughs> <laughs> yes, i mean exactly because I, I mean i i rely on tx index which means we uh we literally go through every block every transaction every output and uh wow that takes time <laughs> yeah so this is what most people are doing they are going through the whole tx index and they build um you know this address index on the side and having it in the node software, you know, having a flag yeah, enable enable address index or whatever would be, uh, you know, I think very useful. Uh, unfortunately, um, 
you know, this doesn't exist in core and this doesn't exist in our <coughs> software, but that would be one of the, you know, if I had the resources to do that, to, to put the word that, uh, that would be one of the, you know, highest price, uh, higher priority items. And, and, you know, if we can do that and if it's successful and it doesn't require too much maintenance, then doing indexer for LCLP and whatnot is probably just an extension of that. Um, that would be what come next. I've um, I've heard people criticize the choice of database used for Bitcoin. Uh, I mean, especially Emin, because uh, you know the database. I guess it's uh, level DB is yeah. is um, I'm trying to not say blockchain optimized because it sounds like um, a buzzword, but it's uh, maybe not the best database to use for Bitcoin. Uh, and, no, uh, I know not. this is I know this <laughs> is something you know quite a bit about, so. Yeah, no, clearly not. So people need to know that uh, level DB was built to save the user settings and those are user data like cookies and stuff like that for uh, the Chrome browser, right? And <laughs> and it ended up so being not the used... transaction history for the whole world, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it ended up being <laughs> used for a ton of other stuff, which which happened a lot in the software world. Like you can think of languages like JavaScript that have been made to do some cool stuff in the browser that end up being used everywhere. And quite often those tools, they are not the best for the job. Uh, and, and this is the case for level DB as well. You know, it's, it's been, it's been made with some use case in mind and it does very well for those use case, but it's not like a high performance database system. Um, thankfully we are not at a volume yet where this is a big issue. Uh, but you know, if the number of transactions increase and everything, it's it's gonna it's gonna be a huge issue. Um, but yeah, thankfully, you know, it's not like the tech require you to use level DB. Um, hopefully, you know, like if the if the usage grow and and the interest in the project grows, uh, that will translate in resources to replace this kind of stuff. At least that's that's the bet we're making. <laughs> Shift with side shift AI. Good job. But it's interesting because ABC are currently midway through a funding. So uh, mm -hmm. we're kind of, it's interesting to think like how, uh, how will things go for Bitcoin ABC considering you're at what, 53% I think at this time of this recording. Um, yeah. How, what will the difference be in terms of uh, the output from a 53% versus a hundred percent, what do you think the focus will be on? Like the difference would be actually pretty big because um, one thing that people that are not in software don't realize is that you have a lot of resources that are just put in maintenance, right? Like, you know, keeping things running and fixing small stuff here and there that may not be super visible uh, for users, but if you don't do it for a while, you know, the software becomes more and more unstable and, and you know, like you guys, you you run a business involving software, so you're probably familiar with that. Um, and so, a, a big chunk of the effort actually goes into maintenance, and then what extra you have on top of it, you can develop stuff that serve user needs. And and those stuff are like the very visible one and the one that that you know uh, get the attention from users. And and so if if say half of your resources goes into maintenance, right? You are funded halfway, you do maintenance and you develop <laughs> almost nothing new, right? Mm -hmm. Like the, yeah. the output is almost zero. And if you get to, to double that, then you, you suddenly have a huge budget to build new stuff, which is what we'd want to do. <laughs> um, and and so, so the difference is actually pretty big between, between halfway funded and, and full way funded in, in, in what we can do. Um, right now, right now, the, the, you know, the amount of effort that goes into building new stuff for BCH specifically into the BC software is a very small percentage of what we're doing. Uh, it's maybe, I don't know, I don't know specific number. I would have to, uh, look at it to give you specific numbers, but it's probably 10%, maybe 15% of the work top that, that goes into stuff that are, you know, specifically to make. BCH better, 
And everything else is like, oh, you know, like you have a new version of whatever library and we need to support that. Or, you know, there is a bug and whatever Linux distribution and we need to support that. Or, you know, you know, all this kind of bullshit that, that just keeps things running. Um, so, so yeah, if we can move that stuff from like, you know, 10, 15% to maybe half of what we do, I think we can make a huge difference in what we can deliver. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I wanted to ask uh, about Avalanche. So, yeah. I mean, we hear, uh, we've been hearing about Avalanche for a long time and recently I know uh, Ava has been talking quite a bit about it mm -hmm. uh, for their, uh, for their coin, but for Bitcoin cash, what would, what would Bitcoin cash uh, how would it look different with Avalanche support for, you know, for a, a normal user, someone who just like, mostly uses their phone as a, as a wallet or a power user, maybe someone uh, running a full node on a desktop and uh, yeah, and I guess also a business. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, for user, basically what it changed is that within a few seconds, you know, that the transaction is, is, you know, okay or, or not okay, right? So right now, right now you send a transaction in the, in the network and it's kind of in limbo for, you know, about 10 minutes, but you know, it can be more, it can be less depending on the variance of the blocks. And on BCH, we kind of have a gentleman agreement between people mining the chain that they are gonna use similar policies, but there is effectively nothing forcing them to do so and we see that you know there are actually a few differences in policy between between those miners and those small differences in policy they cause uncertainty on the network and so um, so if you're a business for instance you cannot accept a payment for a large amount um, you know without waiting for confirmation for a small amount maybe it's okay because you know the level of security much that you want, it de yeah, it depends, you know, like the, the risk you are taking, you know, if I pay you $10, maybe, you know, you're not going to put those $10 into a vault and, and uh, you know, hire like security guard and whatever to keep the vault, right? But if I pay you $10 million, then maybe you want to put that in, in some more secure place, right? Like you want to adapt your level of security to, to you know, like the risk associated with that. And so for small value payment, it's probably okay, but for large value payments, it's a bit of a problem. And so uh, Avalanche would essentially make a decision on each transaction, uh, typically in less than two seconds. And so in less than two seconds, you would know, okay, this is, this is good or this is no good, right? And after that, you cannot change the decision. So that would be a plus for both businesses and user, right? Because if businesses cannot accept the payment right away, the experience for users is degraded as well. Like people that want to send money on an exchange, for instance, they don't want to wait for six confirmation, which, you know, can take, a, you know, if they could send it and a few seconds later, boom, the money is there. It's a much better user experience. Do you, um, do you think Bitcoin Cash will ever be, either in your mind or, or everybody's mind, ever be, Feature complete. Well, in my mind, uh, almost certainly yes. Because, um, yeah, some people want to shove a bunch of stuff into the protocol, but I'm more of the opinion that, uh, you know, stuff like SLP, for instance, I think are, are, are pretty great because they build on top of the protocol, but that means that if I want to do like SLP2 that works differently, or if I want to do something that works completely differently than SLP that does token in a completely different way, I can do that as well. And I think this approach is generally preferable because uh, when you start baking everything into the protocol, well, basically it's more expensive to bake stuff in the protocol, right? Because I was going to say, then you get XMPP. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get, yeah, yeah. There are, there are many protocols that went that way and Usually, usually it's not that great, right? Because uh, every time you want to implement a new feature, you know, you need to modify the protocol in some way, but there are many people that are using some other version of the protocol. So you need to have like a very long timeline and, and you know, a deployment process and everything. 
Whereas if you're building on top, you can be like, okay, you don't need anybody's agreement actually. You can build something on top and, and publish it. And if it's good, people are gonna use it. So as much as possible, I would like to uh, encourage this kind of, you know, this kind of way of doing things rather than bake everything into the protocol. And so what that means is that what you want to have at the protocol level is a way to reconciliate, you know, like double spends and stuff like that, that is as fast as possible and that scales very well, right? That's, that's basically what you want. And then you want a few features in there that allow people to build on top of it. That's, that's, you know, that's the way I see it. And then once you have that, you don't need to build that much into it. And this is why the, uh, the roadmap that we have right now kind of support that, right? It introduced like various feature that, that allow for better scalability and, and um, uh, you know, like faster reconciliation time and introduce a few stuff that allow people to build on top of that. But you know, like beside that, I don't think much is needed. That doesn't mean the work stops there because um, you know, you still need to do maintenance and, and there is a lot of, um, you know, there's a lot of scaling stuff, for instance, that doesn't require a change at the protocol level, right? So for instance, we were talking about level DB earlier. We know that at some point in the future, we're gonna have to move away from level DB to something else. And when we do that, it's like, it's gonna be a lot of work and it's gonna pay, you know, like big benefit for, for people using the chain, but it's not something that's required to change the consensus rules. Yeah, I mean, uh, most users uh, hopefully don't know which database is used inside of uh, their Bitcoin client. I hope they don't know. Yeah. Because uh, if you have to know, there's, uh, we have a lot of work to do. If you have to know, then mass adoption is far, far away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For sure. Become an early adopter. Sideship.ai. So I wanted to uh, mention this as well. So I think it was probably last week when we, when we were setting this up, Andreas and I were having a glass of wine and we're talking about uh, what we're going to speak to you about. And I said, uh, I'm not really a conspiracy theorist, but I did mention that I thought that, um, you know, as all these teams, these four node teams have, have come out and received funding, um, I, I, I said maybe you actually uh, wanted that to happen, Amory, um, because it would help decentralization. Is, is that the case or am I way off with that? <laughs> um, so yes and no. Uh, some part of that I want to happen and some part of that I think is gonna be detrimental for, for the project. So let me, let me dig a bit into that. Um, first, We've been supporting the, the idea that we should have multiple clients uh, since pretty much the beginning, right? And this is why uh, when we created BCH with, uh, you know, with John Alt and a few Chinese miners and, you know, a few other people, um, <clears throat> we specifically made two different brands for Bitcoin ABC and Bitcoin Cash. And, and we made like two websites and, you know, two different names and two different logos. And the reason is that we wanted other client to be able to join and, and participate in the network. That was, that was a very conscious decision. Um, and and it, it, it's somewhat important, right? Because sometimes you're going to have a bug in one of the client, for instance, and you want to, you want to be able to, to use another one if the bug cannot be resolved very quickly, you know, and, and all software have bugs. And so, <laughs> So this is like, you can try to take measure to reduce the probability of that happening, but it's gonna happen once in a while. Um, it's like, it's pretty much a given. And the way the software industry avoid that is what they call end versioning. So let, um, let's take the example of airplanes. Uh, airplanes have various critical systems such as, uh, you know, automatic piloting feature, whatever they call that, right? It's, it's very important that this is very reliable. And so the way they do that is that they have three teams of people working on that system in the company. And two teams are, you know, prevented, completely forbidden to talk to each other and they are gonna build their own version 
of the system. And the third team is there to review what those two teams are doing and make sure that they don't end up using the same stuff, uh, you know, just, just by chance or because, you know, this is what exists to, to build that feature. So they need to make sure that they use different hardware and they use different algorithm and, and they use different compilers or preferably even programming language to do it. They need to make sure that those two systems as are built with, you know, different component as much as possible. And then you bake the two system into the airplane and the two system compute, you know, whatever the trajectory of the plane or whatever needs to be. And if they agree, then everything is fine. And if they disagree, then the pilot is prompted with, uh, you know, an information saying like, okay, there is a problem with, with, you know, the automatic piloting feature and, and you need to take some action. So this is how it works. In but we don't know and, which uh, action. <laughs> No, well, it's up to the pilot, right? This is why we pay we pay the pilot like a, a, a good salary and everything. And, and we pick them very carefully because they may have to make this kind of decision. <laughs> um, but the point is, is that you have several versions of the system and you can uh, monitor them uh, so that if one of them goes off rail for whatever reason, it's very unlikely that, you know, several of them are going to go off rail in the same way at the same time. Uh, and, and so that makes the system much more robust and much more secure, even though each individual part is not as robust and as secure as the whole. And so you can do the same with not software for the network, right? But um, one of the problems we've seen is that most not software actually use Bitcoin ABC consensus, uh, consensus code. And so it it's like, it's a big dampening on that effect on making the network more secure, right? Because if everybody is using the same code for the consensus algorithm, you know that any kind of consensus bug, uh, well, they are all gonna have the same, right? And so, so this is a big of an issue. And so, um, I, I, they are not all using it. Uh, as far as I know, like BCHD is not using it. And um, there is another one, Bitcoin Verde is not using it, but, Every single other node software that I know of is using the lead Bitcoin consensus, at least, if not more code from Bitcoin ABC. And so it doesn't really achieve, um, it doesn't really achieve anything on that front. And so that's like a bit a, of a... Almost getting to the point of, uh, what's it called? Like decentral decentralization uh, theater. Yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah, and, and this is where I'm a bit disappointed because... Um, like there is a real opportunity here to set BCH apart by, by providing like a real feature of the network. It's not like a feature in terms of, there is any code behind it, right? But it's, it's a feature of the network in terms of, like if you see the network as a product. Um, and, and I think we have not been very good at providing that feature because, uh, well, you know, <laughs> because we have not been focused on on providing the value that is associated with that feature. We've been instead focusing on, on you know, tough wars and stuff like that, but those doesn't really benefit user. And so this is, this is the part where I'm not so happy about what's happening. Uh, it's a lot of that, a lot of that is about power struggle. Uh, a lot of, of what you see right now is about power struggle and, and well, you can see that because some of the nodes that have been funded have like literally zero track record. Uh, they have been created literally weeks before the fundraising. And so this is a very clear, well, I may be wrong, but to me, this is a very clear um, uh, sign that, you know, someone smelled, okay, there is, there is demand for that right now. And so there is money to be made. So I'm going to, you know, throw that janky project together in like three weeks. And, and present myself as this alternative not software and, and get funding that way. Um, oh, it, those are not... fighting words, Omri. <laughs> fighting words. <laughs> well, but, but it, it, it's true, right? Like some, I mean, like this is not true for every single not software, right? Like, you know, I mentioned uh, BCHD and Verdi and they are doing real work, but um, this is the case for some other, for some other not project. And, and this is going to be very damageable for BCH because what's going to happen is that then a lot of energy is going to go into that tough war instead of making the network better. And so 
you end up with like, you know, this is like the crab basket mentality. Like everybody start fighting in that basket and, and it's even worse than the crab basket situation because the fact that everybody is fighting to, to be on top in that basket is actually shrinking the basket. Right. So, so, so it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like the crab basket situation, but even worse. And so, um, and so that is very sad. And, and another thing that is very sad is that you see a lot of money going toward that. And so, uh, you know, as the saying goes, you get what you pay for. And so as a, as a group, we are paying for that crab basket fight. I don't know, like maybe people enjoy watching the crab stepping on each other and they find it very fun. And so they want to, <laughs> you know, and, and they want to, to throw money at this so that the, the show continues. But um this is not doing good for the project and so uh i mean so yeah this it, would is be, unfortunate. it would be easier just to would be easier just to um have like a mud wrestling competition between abc and bu <laughs> uh, i don't know like the bu bu is 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 something else still because one of the recurring one of the recurring things that have been happening with BU is that they disagree on the fact that a roadmap is even required. And if you think that's true, you are going to realize very quickly that this is a huge problem, right? Because so you do, you do shitcoin.com and you have um, like, I don't know if I should call it an exchange, but you have like an exchange like feature and you do the podcast. It, it first attracts attention on the stuff. It also gets you contact with, with people in the space. So all of that, you know, goes into, into the same direction. There is some kind of, of, you know, vision directing the different action that are taken by the organization. But this requires somehow that, that you have a vision of where you want to go, right? If you have no vision of where you want to go, then, you know, like maybe I can join the company. I'm like, you know, I'm going to join shitcon.com. But actually, I think that you guys should support Black Lives Matters. Well, what are you going to say? Are you going to be like, you know, I, Black Lives Matter is actually completely irrelevant to what shitcoin.com is doing. It makes no sense for shitcoin.com to be as a pro or against Black Lives Matter. It's, it's like, it's not even a subject, right? It's not what we are doing. And No, that's and so, the Nike's job. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> well, that tells you that Nike is not selling you shoes, right? That they are selling you a brand. Uh, and, and that's okay too, but, um, yeah, that's, that's a direction that the company has taken, but, but anyway, you know, like back to the stuff, you need to have that vision of what you're building, because if you don't agree on what you're building, there is no meaningful way that we can cooperate on building it. And yeah. so the, the fact that BU disagree on the fact that there should be a roadmap at all makes it basically impossible for anyone to cooperate with them. And this is something that has not started with ABC actually. Like if you, if you go back, I know, I know that you and Rhea were around at the time. Um, before, before there was a fork on anything, there was a lot of tension between BU and Classic and XT, right? And, and it led to a fork in the, in the test network. Um, I, I don't know if you remember that. I think it was 2015. <laughs> Where I don't remember. Uh, is, is XT the one Gavin was working on? Yeah, XT was the one Gavin was working on. So what happened, I think it was in 2015, is that you had BU that had an ID on O2 activate bigger blocks, and you had a Classic that had another ID on O, <laughs> they should be activated. But, but they used the same flag activation mechanism, right? But some of the rules were different, notably the rule on CGOPS. We don't need to go into details on, on, you know, what it is, what is important is that they, they did something differently in how they activated big blocks. And so in 2015, there was a test activation on big block on testnet. And it ended up producing two chain, you know, one with the classic node and one with the BU node because they couldn't agree on, on that damn stuff. And and I remember like at the time I was trying to work with the BU guys and the classic guy. I didn't, you know, study the ABC or whatever, but
but this is the kind of event that led me to you know, create ABC down the road. I, I was trying to get them to agree on that damn SIGOPS rules because if you don't agree, you can have a fork. And, and both positions were completely retarded, if I have to be honest. Like, I think the, <laughs> the classic position was that we keep the SIGOPS limit to what it was. And so what would have happened is that you activate big blocks and so the block can grow for a while, but at some point you would run into the SIGOPS limits and you would have the same scaling problem again. And so for, be... people, for people who don't know what SIGOPS is, it's short for signature operations. Yeah. And uh, that's when you use cryptography to sign things and it's pretty slow compared to just like, say, adding two numbers together. Yes. Yeah, so this is, this is the most expensive operation that you need to do to validate a transaction. So there is a limit of how many of those you want to put in a block because you don't want someone malicious to protocol a block that is packed with SIGOPS and that is and takes expensive more than two to hours. validate. Yeah, <laughs> and it can take more than two hours to validate if you, you know, jam pack it and you remove that limit. And so, um, and so just like the block size limit, if you don't remove that limit, uh, you could produce bigger block, but at some point you're gonna run into it, and so you don't really have solved the problem. And the BU position at the time was like, we don't want the limit at all, and so they removed the limit. We don't think it's important, um, and so they removed the limit, which opens, uh, you know, creates a lot of security problems. Um, and 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 yeah, basically, like you know this this mindset where you know everybody run into their own direction and we don't need to have like any kind of, of roadmap or agreement or whatnot it's just it's just not working you know it's just not possible because you end up with you know everyone on their own network basically if everybody acts like that and so uh, sounds pretty decentralized to me <laughs> yes yes well <laughs> This is a way you decentralize, but this is not a way you decentralize what's creating value. And, and we got to keep in mind that decentralization is not the goal. It's, it's um, you, know, in, uh, you know, specifically for BCH, the goal is to create peer-to-peer -peer digital cash that, you know, as many people as possible can use. Uh, possibly even like, you know, the ultimate success condition is that it becomes money for the world and everybody use that. Um, so, this is the goal. And you know that some amount of decentralization is necessary for that goal because it makes the system more robust. Um, technically, but not just technically, you know, like uh, there are going to be, you know, as it gets bigger, there are going to be people that want to take control of that thing and, and, and you know, or, or try to destroy it, right, as well. You, you can expect some nation state, for instance, if it gets to the scale where it's as big as a nation state currency, you can expect nation state to be uh, pretty unhappy about that and, and maybe want to put a stop to it. Well, if you have a center, you know, like if, every, if everything, either in the social organization or in the technical organization, goes through some kind of central point, um, then it's very easy for a powerful actor to target that central point and get everything shut down. Uh, whereas if there is no central point that way, then it's much more difficult. Very cool. I, I think on that point, I think that's a really good point to uh, round it off on. Um, how do we keep up with everything that, that you're up to personally and uh, what's going on with Bitcoin ABC? Uh, well, on the technical front, we have reviews.bitcoinabc.org, which is where all the development is happening. Uh, we have various Telegram groups where uh, you know, you can get in touch with people that, that is or use the software or build the software. Um, and, and you can find those groups in, in BitcoinABC.org if you, you know, if you search on the website. Well, first on BitcoinABC.org, you're going to find like the recent news, the latest version of the software, this kind of stuff. But um, it's not like there is a blog or something where you're going to find new stuff there every day. It's like a very, it's more like of a functional website, you know. Here is the latest version, and here is like the important news when we have one. Um, but but you're gonna find in there links to various Telegram channels where you know discussion is happening, and you can talk to people to to ask whatever you're interested in. Great, and yeah, give give Amari a, a follow on Twitter, which is always a, an entertaining watch at Deadonix. 
mm-hmm. yeah, definitely worth worth a follow. Um, thank you so much, Amory, and uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure.